I'm joined today by medically retired Marine Corps Corporal Michael Jernigan, who proudly served with Company E, 2nd Battalion, 2nd Marine Regiment. On August 22nd, 2004, while on a deployment in Mamadiya, Iraq, Michael's platoon was on patrol when it was hit by two 155 millimeter artillery shells that were buried in the ground. Uh, the blast caused life-threatening and life-changing illnesses, uh, injuries. 45% uh, of Michael's cranium was crushed in. Uh, he had shrapnel enter his right eye and exit through his left eye, which cut everything in between. And he had to have two fingers reattached and his right hand fully reconstructed. He fractured his patella, he cut his femoral artery, and Michael went through 30 major surgeries in the first 12 months and spent 16 months in hospitals and rehabilitation facilities. But since that attack, Michael has taken this second chance at life and turned it into something that is never taken for granted. He's a volunteer. He graduated with a bachelor's degree from the University of South Florida, and he was also featured on the HBO documentary, A Live Day. He's also been a contributing writer to the New York Times.com's Home Fires blog, and congratulations to him, most recently, he was selected as the 2020 Citizens Honor Service Act Award recipient from the Medal of Honor Society. Mike, thank you for taking the time to speak with the AV today. Thank you, Rob. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I get to talk to you. I think it's uh, <laughs> my day is looking a lot better. I appreciate that. Um, there we go. So, since learning about you, I've been amazed by the amount of things that you've accomplished in spite of your injuries. Uh, but even with that superhuman will and resilience, uh, you have really been tested by this COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting social isolation. Can you tell us yes. about when you first started to notice something was off uh, and that the isolation was, was taking a toll on your well-being? You know, I, I, I'll be honest, I think my wife noticed before I did, you know, but uh, we got, uh, we were in D.C. Uh, doing some lobbying for the foundation back in late February. And then we came home and I mean, I had been reading about this, uh, this coronavirus issue in China and as it was spreading in the Wall Street Journal. And then mid-March here, I live in Fort Worth, Texas now, we got locked down. And, you know, it was interesting because it's not necessarily, I didn't have any place to go really. But for some reason, just being told that I can't go anywhere just had a bad effect on me. And I started getting a little aggressive. I started getting irritable and angry. and um, it got a little volatile around the house, you know, and I'd say that was probably three weeks in, two to three weeks in, um, it really started to, to, to go. And, and through that uh, trying period, um, you somehow uh, another found well, your way to, to mind. So I'll, I'll tell you what was interesting about our, our experience in the beginning was, you know, the first week of the lockdown, we had a plumbing issue, okay? Our, our toilets weren't draining. So we, uh, we wound up having to call the city and the city came out and they were checking the pipes out back uh, and they were trying to blow air into the system to see if they can dislodge a clog, right? And in the process, they blew uh, wastewater in up through our toilets and sinks into our bathrooms. Uh, and we had wastewater about two to three inches deep in the bathrooms, right? And this is wastewater from five different homes in the neighborhood. Uh, wow. You know, oh yeah, it, it was, I mean, I'm talking, my, it, my wife had to clean this up. You know, uh, luckily we had people that had cleaning supplies that were willing to help and dropped off Clorox and that type of stuff. And the, uh, the city of North Richland Hills, Texas, where I live, they stepped up and they took care of us and they got it fixed. And our landlord was great and helping through the process. But, you know, this was a four or five day process to get this thing fixed. So, you know, when you wake up one morning because you hear water flowing in your bathroom and you step into your bathroom and you realize that you're standing in a few inches of wastewater, that's a wonderful way to wake up, you know? Yeah, that's, that'll do so, it. Yeah, and there, there's a lot of that kind of kicked off, okay, this is what this quarantine is going to be like. And, you know, I think that that incident and, and in addition with being told, you know, you can't go anywhere and the stress and the frustration of trying to deal with the city because the city workers were, were not working at the time, right? So I've got to convince the city of NRH here in Texas to, to get their guys out here and help. Um, and then, of course, when the problem happened, they kept telling me, well, this could be weeks before we get it fixed. And, you know, so there's that type of thing. And 
I, luckily the city stepped up and within days they got it fixed, which was great. But you know, it's just a whole way to kick off the quarantine and it kind of set my mood for this quarantine is what I'm trying to say. And, and you, you told me uh, recently though, that you, you found some despite those challenges and that sounds Yeah, awesome. so, okay. So you tell I, me about some mindfulness. So this was manifesting itself with a lot of anxiety and a lot of aggression and anger. So I decided to call uh, the, the vet center because I do counseling at the Arlington Vet Center. And I asked if they do any anger management type counseling. And they said no, but they referred me to the Fort Worth uh, VA outpatient clinic. And I got in touch with somebody there to do some anger management. Well, they normally do their anger management in like group counseling and there's in a group session with a workbook. And there wasn't a group session going on for obvious reasons. So I'm trying to go through this workbook by myself and I'm trying to do this with a counselor that's normally in a group session. It just wasn't working. And I, I told the lady, you know, with all due respect that this isn't working for me, I think I need to go a little deeper with a, a, like counseling, counseling. So I got set up with a doctor at the Fort Worth Clinic there. And he started talking about mindfulness practice Right. And we, we've, we're hearing a lot of this. We're starting to see commercials for these apps on TV and talking about meditation and how this can help. And, you know, I'm finally at the point at 15 years after being wounded where I'm, I'm willing to try anything. Right. If it's going to work, I'm, if there's a chance it'll work, I'm willing to try it. So I started trying this mindfulness practice and I have gotten some, some good benefits from it. Can you tell me what that practice is like for people who aren't familiar with, with mindfulness? <laughs> like I was four weeks ago? Like you, just like you. Yeah. You know, what, what I did was, um, you know, I asked the counselor, I said, so what is mindfulness? You know, you hear about it all the time. How do you define this? And he said, you know, mindfulness is really just the, the art of practicing being in the moment at the time. Okay. And, you know, you hear that and you're like, okay. So being the, the student I am, I, I got my history degree, so I, I go searching for information. I went into audible.com and I found a book called Practicing Mindfulness. And I downloaded it and started reading it to get an, an idea of what mindfulness is. And you know, I think the best way I can define what is mindfulness really is, it's the, it's the practice of bringing your mind back to what you're doing at the moment okay because our mind wanders all the time we sit at our desks in front of our computer our mind wanders we start getting hungry we start thinking about food you get the idea but it's being able to refocus the brain on the task at hand hmm. and, and i'm thinking you just caught me just right now thinking about what my next question was going to be how are you exactly. how right. are you trying to to how do you how are you able to to incorporate mindfulness uh into your everyday life what is that practice like well, you know, I, I started meditating, okay? So I'm doing at least uh, 30 minutes of meditation a day. Uh, and I'm just trying to, throughout the day, and this was the great thing about that book I picked up, Practicing Mindfulness, is it has a bunch of exercises uh, on how to, how to build this capability because this is something that, yes, we can do, right? It, it's, but it's something we're not really used to doing. As Americans, we're, we're always on the run, right? We're always working, we're always going. You know, I, I was listening to a song the other day that just came out called Work, and the, guy, the guy's crooning about how he's always working, he's always working, he's always working, and then when he acts with, interacts with people, it's just through his phone. You know, and we're disconnected, but we're always stressed out. So meditation has been extremely beneficial for me through all of this. And I, I this might be a strange question, but you, you are, a, are, are a Marine, I was a Marine, I am a Marine. Um, is there any similarity at all? And, and I know that I think about back to, to rifle training specifically, and, and uh, that feels like almost like a, a meditative practice, you know, just. Uh, well, you know, it's funny. Like, you look at, you're talking about like snapping in, right? And the rifle yeah. week and all of that type of stuff. It definitely is, you know, and you see uh, people, religious uh, people in religious sects that do this through prayer and that type of stuff. You know, I think. Uh, the meditation for me is, is a way to just try to focus on nothing, right? And the way I do this is I'll sit down, I'll lay down on my bed uh, flat, I'll get comfortable, I'll sit, I'll lay there for a couple of minutes because you know you get fidgety and you gotta find a, a comfortable thing. I've got noise canceling earbuds, I put them in. 
as far as like mindfulness goes, I think the military conversion devil dog is situational awareness, right? That was drilled into our head from day one was, was situational awareness. Be aware of the situation you're in right now. You know, we focus on the mission at hand, right? Because the mission at hand is the mission we're doing right now. We don't have to focus three weeks from now. We've got to focus on what we're doing right now. And that's where it kind of interlines with our military training. Do you think that there is a, uh, a resistance maybe from uh, the military, from veterans uh, to, to getting into something that almost has like a, a bit, and you, maybe you experience this, it has a bit of a woo-woo sound to it, you know? Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, so that's it's some hippie stuff, right? Yeah, you know, it's a stepping we, we, stone we, drug for something else. Meditation, <laughs> mindfulness is a stepping stone drug. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. We'll see, you know, it's funny. Uh, my wife, my wife, Kimberly, is a, is a wonderful woman. We got married back in 2017. But in, when we started dating in 2015, uh, I was on antidepressants, anti-anxiety medication. I was taking Zolpidem for sleep. And I, I was still anxious all the time. And she started doing some research and she got me on lavender oil, right? And using melatonin and I was able to get off all those medicines. And then uh, now I'm doing meditation. I, I, oh, did I mention my wife's from Southern California? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's but I, it, 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 it is. And I was, so it's funny because a few years ago, I think it was 2017, I was living in Florida. Uh, my wife and I were living in Florida, but we came out to Texas for a pro a two week program for traumatic brain injury, because obviously I have traumatic brain injury. And, uh, they taught me a meditation practice to do for 20 minutes a day. That was supposed, and they told me it could help me lower my blood pressure. I'm like, okay. And I went home and I tried it for a little while and I just didn't stick with it because some of the other stuff they told me I, I didn't like. And I think it is that military mindset that, you know, this is, this. I'm thinking of, you know, long haired hippies putting flowers down rifle barrels at protests, or you think of Buddhist monks and loincloths sitting there for hours meditating. It just, it's not what we're trained to do. We're trained to be conflict resolvers, right? We're trained to come in and, and we're also told that we can handle anything, right? It's drilled into us in training. That's necessary for our mission in the military, but it affects our life from the military forward. You know, and we take that mindset into the rest of our life. And sometimes that, that doesn't convert to a stress-free life. I was hesitant. I, I had, you know, was, was hesitant. The word is escaping me now. But, you know, I was hesitant to do it because the meditation, it just seemed like, How's that going to help? How is taking 30 minutes out of your day to sit there and think about nothing going to help? But like I said earlier, I was at the point where I was willing to try anything. Well, Mike, I, I, Michael, I appreciate uh, you, you sharing that journey uh, with DAV today. Uh, it's, uh, you, you look great. Uh, you sound great. I saw you in February, and, and which was right before the this this pandemic started, uh, and uh, it it really does my heart good to to see you and, and talk with you again, and and I really appreciate you sharing your mindfulness journey uh, with our audience. Yeah, well, I, it's here's the thing: if it can help anybody else, it's worth it. You know, I know that I'm not the only one facing this. If I'm facing this, there's there's a lot of other guys and, and girls that are facing the same thing. You know. It's, it's funny because you get so used to being on the run, you get so used to doing things that when you're, when you're confined to your house and all of a sudden you've got nothing to do, you don't really know how to organize your time and your brain kicks into hyperdrive, you know, because your brain is used to running, it's used to moving, it's used to, to doing things and then they, they, you got to be able to deal with it. You know, I look at this and it's just another tool in my rucksack, you know. It's just another tool in my rucksack. So now I've got this tool. So when I face problems, I can pull this out and I can apply it and, and it'll help me accomplish whatever mission I'm trying to do. Again, thank you. Thank you so much for, for sharing that tool with, with DAV. And uh, we look forward to talking to you again. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, definitely.